Boeing sent two astronauts to space in June, and as of now, they can't bring them home. And Boeing's rival, SpaceX, might actually be tapped to rescue them from the International Space Station. The astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, were supposed to only be on the ISS for 10 days. They've been up there for over 60, and if SpaceX has to bring them home, they won't come back until February of 2025. I'm a space industry expert. I've worked on crewed spacecraft and even space stations, but now I bring all of that to you to help you understand and keep up with what's going on in the ever-changing space industry. So I put together this video to fill you in on everything that's going on, including all the tea and where where we go from here. Let's back up to June 5th, 2024, when Starliner launched. On its way to the ISS, flight computers onboard Starliner shut down five of its thrusters because they were overheating. These thrusters are really important because they precisely control the orientation and the position of the spacecraft. Four of the thrusters did come back online and the astronauts did make it to the ISS. But instead of continuing with the normal plan to bring them home 10 days later, NASA made a call very early in the mission to say, hold tight, we're gonna do some tests to see what is going on with these thrusters. One of the reasons they did this is because the thrusters actually exist in a part of the spacecraft that will detach from where the astronauts ride and burn up in the atmosphere. So if they want to know what's going on with the thrusters, what caused the issues, and how to prevent them in the future, they need to figure it out while Starliner is docked to the ISS. Engineers started running tests on the same thrusters here on Earth to again figure out one, what went wrong, but also two, does this pose any risk to the astronauts when they come back to Earth? They've since completed the testing, but they still don't understand what the root cause is. They think that the Teflon seals in the thrusters are actually bulging and the propellant might be vaporizing, both thanks to the overheating issues. But they don't know what's causing the overheating and they can't agree on how safe it is to return the astronauts in Starliner. So while all this testing has been going on, NASA has been figuring out some contingency plans. One of which being SpaceX has to rescue the astronauts. This would be a huge blow to Boeing, which they quite frankly can't afford with all the aircraft issues that we've seen in the last couple of years. They've been struggling to keep up with SpaceX's version of this spacecraft called Dragon since the early days, even though Boeing got significantly more money to develop Starliner. Boeing got $4.5 billion and SpaceX only got $2.6 billion. And because NASA and Congress finally stopped giving out cost plus contracts, meaning the agency would continue to pay the bills no matter how over budget the program was, Starliner has cost Boeing $1.6 billion since 2016. This flight alone has cost them an additional $125 million. Starliner is years behind schedule. I mean, SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft launched over four years ago. And since May of 2020, they've launched 50 people over 12 missions, including several commercial spaceflight missions where tourists are paying to go to space. The next NASA mission for Dragon is called Crew-9, and this is actually where the rescue plans come into play. Crew-9, like all expeditions to the ISS today, is supposed to have four astronauts. But NASA is heavily considering only sending up two of the Crew-9 astronauts so that Butch and Sonny can ride back on the Dragon vehicle. But that wouldn't happen until February of 2025. The reason it's so far away is because they have to complete the Crew-9 mission, which is a six month mission. And Crew-9 won't be launching until at least the end of September now. NASA has to make a decision by mid-August, which is literally next week. Starliner has a limited amount of time it can stay docked to the ISS actually 90 days. We're at pretty much 65 days right now. This is partially due to concerns over the lithium ion batteries overheating while it's docked to the ISS, which was a concern that actually delayed this exact mission last year. Starliner is also taking up precious docking space on the ISS. Crew-9 will dock in the same position Starliner is in right now, so literally Boeing Starliner has to leave before Crew-9 can go up. But here's another major issue. Starliner currently can't undock without people on board. To update the software to allow for autonomous undocking would require Boeing to dust off some code that hasn't been touched since 2022, test it, and push it to Starliner. All of which is gonna take about four weeks. And even though Butch and Sunny wouldn't be on board in this scenario, this route deeply concerns me because software issues are one of the leading causes of mission failures, especially if they're rushed. What happens if something fails and it doesn't undock and move away from the ISS exactly like it's supposed to? And Starliner has had a lot of software issues. Actually, the first uncrewed flight of Starliner in 2019 didn't even make it to the ISS because of over 80 software failures. 
years. In 2022, they redid that flight, it made it to the ISS, and it was deemed a success, but they did have to make several design changes to Starliner after that flight. Are we absolutely sure that all of those changes are captured not only in the software that they haven't touched since 2022, but also in the testing configuration? And again, all of this has to be done fast. Rushing something like this could go very, very wrong, especially with Boeing's track record. Now, there's also the issue of helium leaks in the propulsion system. NASA is increasingly worried about a worst case scenario called an integrated failure mechanism between the helium leaks and whatever is going on with the thrusters overheating. This could cause issues with the spacecraft being able to orient itself and point itself properly on its reentry trajectory. And if you don't get that angle just right, it can either enter the atmosphere way too fast and ruin the space capsule, or maybe even worse, it could bounce off the atmosphere and go out into space. All of this is causing NASA, as they admitted this week, to quote, get more serious about considering alternative options. And I honestly think that the likelihood of Butch and Sunny returning home on a SpaceX Dragon is really high. As bad as this situation is, the great thing is NASA has planned for contingency. There's a reason that way back in 2014, NASA asked for two competing spacecraft to do the same exact thing routine astronaut flights and cargo to the International Space Station. Because if something goes wrong, you don't wanna be out of options to get home. And honestly, this is a really great test of NASA's ability to act on those contingency options, which they're already building into future moon missions. That's why SpaceX and Blue Origin are both developing their own lunar landers. But what does happen next if Butch and Sunny don't return home on Starliner? To be honest with you, I think it'll guarantee a swift end to the Starliner program forever. And I know this might seem extreme and that, you know, it seems like we're expecting perfection even on demo flights like this one truly is but Starliner's issues, as we've just talked about throughout this entire video, run much, much, much deeper than just this mission. I mean, they've literally been working on Starliner since 2010 and have just had major issue after major issue. I think one of the reasons that NASA hasn't just said, you know what, we're just gonna send them home on Dragon, fix the Starliner issues and try again is because I, I think that they do know that it would be the end of the Starliner program. And of course, money does not outweigh human lives, but unfortunately, space is very political and they have spent a lot of money on this. So would Congress see this as an excuse or whatever the reason may be to stop funding space travel efforts in the future when NASA's budget is already so much lower than it should be. And from the Boeing side, they've already lost so much money on the spacecraft. Again, $1.6 billion that they have had to fork out to cover the extra expenditure of Starliner's development. How long would it take Boeing to fix the Starliner issues? And with the ISS retiring in 2030 and SpaceX's domination over the very small commercial market for these vehicles, what is Boeing's market beyond 2030 that would justify the expenses of having to fix the problem? Because NASA's not paying for it. Boeing would have to pay to fix it. And I mean, who would really wanna fly on Starliner again if Butch and Sunny actually get stuck in space for another six months? NASA has said that SpaceX has already done all the work required to send up two astronauts on Crew-9 and bring Butch and Sunny back home. They have spacesuits ready for them already because they can't use the ones that they flew up in. They're not cross compatible between Dragon and Starliner, but I'm wondering, how do you train astronauts to fly a spacecraft that you've never been in before when you're on the ISS already. But yeah, that's kind of it. That's the Starliner issues in a nutshell. I'll keep you updated as more information comes in, probably through shorts. I'm not quite sure I'll make another long form video about this, but be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification button so you don't miss any of my videos.